Hello, this is Deadlines Studio at the Red Sea Film Festival, and I'm joined by actor, producer, Frida Pinto. Um, I guess I'd probably start by asking Jury DC, you're here on the competition jury. Um, how does that even come about these days? They just call you and be like, hey, do you want to come watch some films for like <laughs> two weeks? Um, pretty much, Zach. Uh, they, it's, it's not two weeks, it's about eight days, and uh, there's a lot of films that we're watching, and they're quite um, different from each other. In, all different languages um, and I think I feel very honored when I get invited to do something like this because uh, it's clear to me that they do see me as uh, someone who is a representative of global cinema not just one region not just one language um, so I do feel like it's a I feel I, I have this honor but it's also a big responsibility um, and so it's really important that before every film um, I'm going in there quite rested, quite um, ready, excited, um, as well as there are days we're watching four films back to back that we are, we are having an outlet to the emotions from the previous film so that we can you know, honor those and not take them into the next so that the next one can be enjoyed completely new. So no film festival parties? <laughs> I, I'm too tired for those. And also, quite frankly, um, I'll just be honest. Um, I find our industry quite bizarre. You know, I can't I can't watch something that is heavy and that has moved me, and then go to a party and smile. Yeah. Um, so um, I actually, if I ever have to go go to a party, I just make a quick entry, say hello, and I leave. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, had you been to Saudi before? Uh, last year, yes. Yeah. yeah. What do you make of the country, the region, and sort of? The, the, the burgeoning industry that's growing here. Oh, it's it's fantastic. It's amazing how much talent there is in this part of the world that uh, we in the West get very comfortable watching our English language programs and, and movies where we're not forced to watch anything in subtitles. Uh, and yet that little subtitle could change our lives because we are going to be watching something that will completely transform the way we think about this region, the women of this region, the talent that comes from this region, and I am just um, blown, my mind's just blown by how f fantastic it is, how advanced they're getting, and how aspirational it is as well. I think that is very important to notice and, um, and you know, give it, give it its due. There's a, there's a quote in the local press, I think you gave an interview, where they were saying that you said um, that your films never show in India. <laughs> 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 what did you mean? Like, do you mean that your films just never screen that? I mean, it? here's the thing. I, I don't know why. Like, Night of Cups, which is a Terrence Malick film that I did, did not have, um, and you know, did not have uh, any kind of distribution in India, and that's what I meant by it. You know, I do a lot of. I did an amazing TV show that I am very proud of for Showtime and uh, for uh, for for Sky Atlantic called Gorilla, and that was a six six part TV series, mini series that did not show in India either. That's what I meant. It's not like I don't want it to show in India. There is There are no distributors for it. And I think that is um, hopefully a problem that I will solve with my own production company because I don't have a lot of say in uh, those projects. I'm not a producer on those. But the ones that I produce will always show in India. In fact, uh, India is going to be a very important market for the things that I do. Awesome. Um, I know that uh, the, obviously the strikes happened and a lot has changed. So I wonder if I could ask you for an update on a really exciting project that you're working on, the, the sort of adap adaptation, the TV adaptation of uh, Hama Abedin's uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, book. I wondered if, yeah, ha how, how that was going, if you had any updates. You know, Jeddah is also a very important place for me to keep coming to because Huma spent a very important part of her life in Jeddah as well. Um, and so for me... Um, that show is very important from many, many different points of view, but I don't want to ruin that now because I want people to watch the show. Uh, and it's coming around, coming about really beautifully. We have a wonderful writer who is young and 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 it's just just this talent that I I I I love her brain. I just love how it works. I love how she absorbs, how she respects, how she explores, and um, I'm very excited for the world to see Aisha's work and for the world to see this TV show when it's ready. Awesome. And j just briefly, if, if I could ask, um, I know you didn't want to spoil it, but for anybody who hasn't read the, the book, what, what time does it cover in her life? Because I know she's lived such an, uh, an eclectic, eclectic life. Obviously, was the, the right-hand woman of Hillary Clinton right. and then obviously lived in Saudi Arabia for a large portion of her life. Right. The, if you've read the book, both and, it's a 500-plus page sprawling uh, memoir. 
um, and it covers everything from the time she was a child to uh, an intern um, for in the Clinton camp and then uh, literally became her right hand, like you mentioned, and uh, the aftermath of the 2016 elections as well, um, and her life today. So our series is going to span um, all of it, but it's then we'd have to make like, I don't know, three different um, seasons of it, but that's not what we're aiming to do. Uh, we're going to pick the choicest moments, and the only teaser I can give you is that we're focusing on love stories in her life. Interesting, interesting. Um, one really interesting thing also about your career is that um, so you, you burst onto the scene, it's been, I don't know, how long has it been, like a like half? Like uh, uh, 20, 2008. 2008. Um, I'm so bad, 15 years, 15. 15 years. 15, um, yeah. It's been a while now, and I guess you're sort of uh, credited for sort of opening up Hollywood and creating a new lane for just like a so sort of a new approach to, 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 to filmmaking and, and the role that women of color can, can have in sort of big Hollywood productions. And I guess uh, with women of uh, Indian descent, you have people like Ali Bhatt who are now working in Hollywood and Bollywood mm -hmm. simultaneously. And um, the sort of work you did with Searchlight could sort of open up a, 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 an avenue for women, women of color in America. Mm -hmm. And I wondered what you thought about your your, your own legacy, um, sort of contemporary legacy uh, as, a, as an actor and um, how, I guess, global cinema has, has sort of, uh, uh, evolved and slowly evolved? I, I, it's a very loaded question because the word legacy then makes you go, first of all, I have, I suffer from imposter syndrome, even though a part of me knows that I have done a good amount of work and I am very proud of it and I'm going to celebrate it. But then there is a small part of me that still suffers from imposter syndrome. Um, and it's important in those moments that I learn how to recognize it and to shut it down just a little bit uh, and not give into self-deprecate deprecation all the time. I do feel what Slumdog did for um, South Asian stories as a whole uh, was a very important turning point. I will like to say that I did not do it by myself, right? It was a whole team. It was the efforts of um, um, not just the filmmakers, but also the people on the ground in Mumbai who put that film together, who made that film possible. But then it's also the people who came before me who may not have had had done a Slumdog Millionaire, um, like Sarita Chaudhary and Irfan Khan, Mira Nair, all of these amazing people who somehow, every little bit of work that we do, we open a tiny door. We open, we crack that door open a little bit more. Um, so I really think that I stand on shoulders of people who've done this before me, and all I have to do is strengthen my shoulders and make sure that my work is very strong so that I can continue being um, the bouncing board for the generation to come after me. Um, and I think that the work that I'm literally looking at doing is, the, or legacy, is the work that I feel proud of. You know, I want to look back in 10 or 15 years and look at a project that I put together and remember that even though it took 10 years to make it, what an amazing job that we actually put it together and feel super proud of it. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.